Welcome to this brief video from mslivingwell.org. By the end, you'll have a better understanding of what MRI is and the role it plays in diagnosing and treating people with multiple sclerosis. MRI, which stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging, is a remarkable way to actually see inside the brain and spinal cord. Using the power of magnets, detailed pictures are taken of the body's nervous system. For individuals with MS, an attack or relapse happens when the immune system attacks the brain, the spinal cord, or the nerves leading to the eyes. Sometimes the actual site of attack can be captured on an MRI picture. For example, here's an area of inflammation in the brain stem, which is located at the base of the brain. A relapse or attack affecting the brain stem can cause double vision, spinning sensations, and balance problems. MRI pictures can demonstrate spinal cord attacks as well. An attack on the cervical portion of the spinal cord in the neck can cause numbness and weakness in the hands and legs. The nerve cells are surrounded by an insulating coating called myelin. An attack can damage the myelin coating, a process known as demyelination. For those viewers living with multiple sclerosis, MRI pictures of your brain can show both old damage and new inflammation. The areas of loss of myelin leave their marks seen on MRI that appear as spots, called lesions. Most new activity seen on MRI happens without people having specific symptoms. MRI images give a lot of information about your past disease, ongoing disease, and potential prediction of your future. When you get an MRI, many different sets of pictures are taken. I'd like to walk you through five key changes that these pictures can show. First, T2 and flare lesions. T2 and flare images make MS lesions in the white matter stand out as bright spots. Your MRI report might refer to these spots as hyperintensities. Classic lesions for MS tend to be deep within the brain around the spinal fluid-filled spaces, called ventricles. Oval or flame-shaped lesions are typical. Other brain lesions can be scattered in the white matter, especially near the surface of the brain. T2 and flare lesions are due to both old damage and new inflammation. People with MS with many T2 or flare lesions when they are diagnosed are at increased risk for disability. Without MS, usually no T2 spots are found in the brain until age 50. Other causes for white matter T2 lesions need to be considered, such as blockage of small blood vessels from smoking and from high blood pressure. Second, T1 with contrast lesions. When contrast is given in the vein, the contrast goes through your blood and seeps out of leaky blood vessels at sites with active MS inflammation. Typical MS lesions that are bright with contrast remain active for only one to two months. The spots may go completely away or leave behind a T2 flare scar. Some people with MS have a lot of active T1 with contrast lesions, while others may have none. Some individuals without recent MS relapses can still have ongoing MRI T1 contrast activity without new symptoms. Here's an example of someone with a lot of T1 contrast activity coming and going on a monthly basis over time. Third, T1 black holes. These dark spots on T1 scans are areas where there has been damage to both the myelin coating and the nerve cells themselves. Since these MS plaques are more severe, people with black holes, also known as T1 hypodense lesions, are at a higher risk for physical disability. Fourth, atrophy. As all of us age, our brains actually shrink. This is called atrophy. In MS, this brain shrinkage can occur more quickly. Atrophy is difficult to measure on a routine MRI exam, but it's important for research purposes. Atrophy is often measured during a clinical trial as the change in brain volume over two to three years. Here is an example of someone with MS who developed significant atrophy and T1 black holes over the course of five years. And fifth, cortical lesions. 
New ways of looking at the brain using MRI have shown that gray matter on the surface of the brain contains MS lesions. The surface of the brain, called the cortex, contains the nerve cells. Cortical lesions are poorly seen on a standard MRI, but new MRI research techniques are making these spots more visible. Cortical lesions are more common in patients with progressive disease. Ready for some good news? MS treatments have had a significant impact on new MRI activity. Many medications prevent over 70% of new lesions from forming or existing lesions from becoming larger on flare or T2 images. Contrast T1 lesions can decrease more than 80% with treatment. In addition, many MS medications have been proven to slow down atrophy and or prevent new T1 black holes. MRI scans are the central tool we have to diagnose MS and help monitor a person's response to treatment. If too much new MRI activity occurs while taking an MS medication, your healthcare provider may consider a switch in treatment. An unchanged MRI is always welcomed positive news and is one measure that your MS is in check. New generations of treatment are being developed in an effort to repair old damage. One promising approach involves creating new myelin coating. In the meantime, sticking with your treatment plan is the best way to keep your MS under control and your MRI results looking good. Thank you for your interest in multiple sclerosis, understanding my MRI. Hopefully, you have a better understanding of MRI changes in multiple sclerosis and will be better informed when discussing your MRI with your healthcare provider. To learn more about all aspects of multiple sclerosis, visit us at www.mslivingwell.org.